What is up, boys and girls of YouTube? So today I'm bringing you a little coaching video. Um, won't be little, actually, be a nice, solid fucking coaching video. It's gonna be a little bit more unique, in a sense, where it appears to be a scrim that one of my viewers is having. He's a solo laner, and there's comms. Usually, I don't even have the sound playing because there's something else going on in the background of these people. We're going to go ahead and listen to it. I haven't listened to more than 10 seconds of it, so I don't know how the comms and everything are going to be. We will see. Um, before we jump into it, please remember to hit the subscribe button. And also, we started up a new supporter tier thing. Um, you, I'm using Patreon. It's basic bitch shit. There's only one tier. It's $1. The only tier there is, the only way you can support, it's a $1 tier. Um, at the end of all my YouTube videos that I edit, I will be throwing in the supporters' names as well as I think the first hundred people, I will be throwing in the message of their choosing. They'll be able to send me a little message to add and that'll run at the end of it every video. Just a way to, to give back. Um, people have been asking me how to support the stream other than subscribing on Twitch. Um, or they ask for a way to support the stream that isn't a $5 donation, which is a subscription or whatever. There's one or other ways to support. So someone came up with this idea. I thought it was the would be interesting. People seem to like it already. I haven't announced it until now. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's jump into this video. And that link is at the top of the description below. And let's go ahead and uh, see what's going on here. It'd be weird coaching a solo lane a little bit, by the way. I haven't done any coaching in a long time. So a lot of this will probably end up being focused on the team fights and on the overall team gameplay. See if I can't make their whole team better. We're also gonna speed this up a little bit. So he's solo laning against Jean Kui. He went for the boot start, which I like, especially if you're in lower level scrims or lower level gameplay. Uh, just doing that is really important. He doesn't miss the blue buff XP. As a solo laner, please, for the love of God, realize go for this. Honestly, in the end, he didn't even have to go for the wave clear. He might have missed one creep, I think. Right. Uh, you, you can just sit here. back and let the wave clear each other, especially if the other guy pushes the wave in. It's better for you to not miss creeps. Ends up working out in the long run. <sighs> so something really minor right here, just for laning phase. Um, he's trying to land his scythe. I personally went through the sw uh, switch over to instant cast. Instant cast is going to be a thousand times better. You're not going to be running around with your scythe out ready to go. You're going to be able to auto attack through those creeps and throw your scythe the second you are ready. Um, so something to think about. Switching over to instant cast. Also making sure you're auto attacking and not just sitting there trying to throw your scythe at somebody or an ability at somebody. They're going for purple right now. Uh, do, 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 do. It's about time for him to back and get boots. I hope when he gets boots, he's looking to just pressure out. Um, so overall, in your competitive games, your ranked games, if you're trying to bully, push your lead, take over the game, control the pace of the game, out of the solo lane, you want to make it so you're either completely bullying out the other, the other solo laner through kills, poke, whatever. Um, just making sure they don't have pressure. Ideally, you want to do this around blue buff timers. So you can go ahead and invade. Call your jungler over. Tell him, hey, I'm beating this guy's ass. Let's go ahead and go for the blue buff. Uh, and then outside of that, it's going to be proxying, clearing, and invading. So proxying, if you do not know, is... I'm going to turn this down a little bit. Uh, proxying, if you don't know, is essentially clearing the wave before it meets the other creeps. So out of the solo lane... Okay. What the fuck was that? <laughs> what the fuck? Is that in-game music, bro? I played this game forever. I don't even know what's happening. Anyway, to proxy is when you clear the waves before they meet. So usually this is done between the tier one and the tier two tower in the little safe spot that is right over here. Um, you only want to do that when you know where the other jungler is or you're tanky enough that the other jungler doesn't matter. Or if you just have a lot of pressure and you want to do something with it. Now, He's obviously doing exactly what I asked him, or I kind of wanted him to do. He bullied out. Um, he missed that. So, 
He was trying to solo in clear. So, solo, ooh, solo the clear on his own. I'm okay with that. It's being aggressive. It's being, he's trying to push his lead, right? So if you're doing that, make sure for the love of fucking God, your abilities are coming up. So whether it's your silence or your one, make sure you have something to secure. The silence would be good because he could lock out the fucking Jean Kui from doing damage and also do damage to the creeps or just his scythe because it should be a guaranteed secure. Now, if he is going to go for a blue buff this early, he has no defense. He's only got boots. You have to prep your jungler for that. So you need to call out, hey, I have a lead. Let's go for the blue. Skip my blue. Go right to the blue. Grab your speed and get over here. Hey, you can skip your speed and come over here. We can win the fight. Those are things you have to be able to tell your jungler, especially at a high level of play, ahead of time. It can't be last second. It can't be like, oh, it's coming up. Let's do it. It's got to be like, hey, blue's coming up. I can do this. Can we do this? And the jungler will say yes or no. Or you'll say, let's do this. And the jungler will say no or yes. And just be That's why I understanding of what you want to do ahead of time and communicate right. that to your team. So he died early. Kind of sucks. But it was 100% expected and 100% avoidable. I don't like the fact that he did it the way he did. I like the idea. I don't like the fact that he went for a solo invade. You know the jungler's going to be there. His pressure wasn't that much. Like, he wasn't destroying the Zhongkui. He just out-cleared him. So, it was awesome. And because he clear out-cleared the Zhongkui, he technically could have just baited in, pulled the Zhongkui away, and backed the fuck out if uh, he wasn't going to tell his jungler to come over. Now that he's going to be a little bit behind, he's pretty much going to lose all the bullying potential uh, unless this he makes a play or this other solo winner fucks up. So, he's basically just going to be sustaining trying to do what he can he has a nemesis so they do have high kill potential honestly they have really high kill potential if the nemesis comes in after clear is used and there's no healing potential they, they could definitely insta kill this on Kui. he's also telegraphing his scythe super hard so you guys gotta be quick with those you have to know you want to throw them out or just bait them use creeps act like you're auto attacking and pop off to the side and throw your scythe Overall, he's going to want to focus on clearing here. He's just not going to be able to poke. It's not going to happen. And his team being down 3-1 to one is not ideal for him out of the solo lane because it appears that his dual lane is also getting fucked. So you've got both side lanes losing, and you have to make a comeback play. He's obviously doing actually really well here with the poke. I, I really don't think it should be going this well, and he just got debated in. So <laughs> this is another. You see he's frustrated. There's another situation. Blue buffs are coming up. The jungle is going to be on the same speed timer as your jungle, right? At least you should be. You should be able to tell. Like your jungler should tell you, hey, we cleared off opposite times. I fucked up something. Blah, 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 right? So, because you know when speeds are coming up, and you know when blues are coming up, you know where the jungler is going to be. The jungler's not going to miss out on that free XP. He's not going to miss out on the free blue. He's Especially if you seem to be invading or playing aggressive, he's always going to be there. And you need to see that ahead of time. You have to be able to see that ahead of time. If you can't push your lead, it's okay. Like, the game's not over. It's all right to just sit there and play through it until something good happens or until uh, the situation changes. Now, with Thanatos, you're pretty much your situation change is going to be you rotating into team fights. So after you lose the bully potential, well, it's, it's going to happen in a lot of gods. Um, outside of guardians, like your warriors and stuff, if you lose that early lead and you don't have the bully potential in lane, you're just waiting until you can rotate. And that has to be respected. Like, you just have to understand that. Smite is played at so many different levels right now in terms of any game. There's, there's different layers to how you might want to play out a game. And that will change throughout. You can't go into the game with one strategy and like only down. play that one way. Shit will happen. Dying early, especially on aggressive guy like Thanatos, can fuck your, your early game up a little bit. So don't make it worse by being greedy. Take a step back. Play through the game. Communicate with your team. Talk to your jungler. Tell them what you need. Or just talk to your team. And be like, look, I can't do anything over here. I, I This went wrong and this is happening. So I'm just kind of here. And let your team know that they have to play through the other lane. That they have to play through the mid lane. Just let them know. There's other ways to play the game. Right now, it's getting to that point where he can rotate to mid camps very, very easily. He's going to want to finish his item before he looks to do anything dumb. But his team can call out for a mid rotation and just play off that fight. Lose a couple creeps maybe just to, to get your team ahead elsewhere. It could be worth it just because of the uh, situation he's in right now. I'm going to go ahead and skip a teeny bit ahead here because it seems he's going to die. <laughs> he's just He's just being bullied. The, the 
the mistakes have piled up to the point where he is being full on bullied. It's hard to keep harping on it, but the early game blue buffs can't go that poorly as when you pick Thanatos. You can't afford to it. Your jungler is luckily making some saves, so you, you got to be happy about that ship. But overall, just take a step back, relax, don't make greedy plays. If you go to, into a situation where you're like, I could probably die here, don't do it. If you go into a situation like, we're going to take a fight and let's see if we can win, that's a whole lot different. And he has not done that yet. His team is making up for it. 100% team is making up for it. That's Aegis. That's Robin Aegis. That's Robin Aegis. He got a Robin Aegis free as fuck right there, which honestly, it probably would have resulted in a kill because he had all, if he had hit that scythe. So it's a somewhat smart Aegis. Would have been nice if he'd have hit the scythe and uh, yeah. we would have known there would have been value there. So right here, just staring at the towers and be pointless. He's going to want to look at back camps, get the timers. You want to go get the timers right now. You need timers. To make up for a lead, it's not going to come from killing the other person. It's going to come from taking farm and gaining farm elsewhere. You win smite by out farming. That can be done through kills, and kills can be a part of that, but very rarely is that the sole reason, and very rarely is that how you're going to come back in a game. Kills do not usually get you directly back into a game. It's farming up to a point where you're even, and then fighting and getting kills will get you back into the game. So during that little bit of time, instead of throwing Scythe and trying to, to bully the Ravana for no reason, look and go get the back timers. These back timers are what I'm talking about, by the way. Get the Harpy timers so you can go for them when they come up. That is very important out of a solo laner. If you are a solo laner and you're not leaving your lane to get farm, you have no control over the game. You The game is not going to be played through you. You are not going to be relevant in the early game. You're just going to be playing to be at the team fights later on in the game. And overall, if I'm a solo laner, that's not how I want to play. I don't want to play like that. So get the idea of killing people out of your out of your mind. Get the idea of out farming people into your mind right away. That is so important, and it's obvious Dude, that, that this person here. Look, we're not trying to like roast these people, by the way. This is just pointing out the things that are going wrong, the things that they're doing wrong, and the things they can do better. I, I don't need to positively reinforce like nice olds, nice sights, and shit like that. Like. You're playing Smite, hit your shit. I'm trying to make you better. And that's all it comes down to. I do like how he is not afraid, though. It is it is uh, awesome no, to see no, him no, just playing up, not being afraid. I'm trying to listen to comms. He should have been communicating. He was rotating early. So now he's going in by himself. All right. I hope they get the kill. He's probably going to die for it. Yep. Okay. So... I don't care if they win this fight. He didn't communicate that he was rotating, going to be there till he was ulting. And at that point, his team had backed off. And there was a separation between his team and their team. So he was falling into two, three, four people on his own. So not only did missing the ult really fuck it up, the fact that his team wasn't able to get the person below threshold because there was no communication is a huge issue. And the fact that you're engaging a fight while your team has disengaged is also very fucking bad. You did not give your time, your team time to get into the fight, continue in the fight, or re-engage in the fight. You got to communicate these things ahead of time. Have to. 100%. Also, if we want to jump back, which I kind of do, I'm going to jump back to right before the uh, the death. So, so right here, right? You full clear. Full clear. Leave the lane. Leave the lane. What is that scythe doing? I know you might want to bully him out and get... I mean, your health wasn't even low until he tooed you. If you had turned and run away and started rotating to the mid fight, which you could see was going on, it would have been huge. And even now, like, it's late. It's a few seconds late. You really should have realized there was a fight going on. The lack of communication... I think these are in-houses, too. These might not be scrims. These might be, like, a bunch of random people. But still, this all applies. I can... I can... Alt here. You hear, I can alt here. The Shibalanke ult was going up, so you know your team can't really be in. So you might want to wait a second and ult at the end of the Shibalanke ult so your team has time to re-engage. For two, you didn't say anything until you got to the Fire Giant. You should have been talking the second that they, as soon as they were saying we're fighting in mid, something's going on, you should be like, I can rotate. You need to be paying attention to those things. You need to be staring at your mini-map 24 fucking 7 so you know where everyone is. Now look at the range difference. He's got four member, uh, members of his team all at half behind this line the the entrance line he's got an aries over the halfway line at half and then full health and ravana behind him full fucking health so he's engaging on their tank who wasn't in threshold with his whole team not able to engage it was just a bad fight and it's okay 
no, that you fucked up, that you didn't call shit right away, but recognize that you didn't do it and just disengage. Yes, you don't have to. Once you all, it doesn't mean I have to go in. Like, if it's going to result in a kill, double kill, triple kill, lose your gold fury, don't fucking do it. Do not do it. Also, you telegraph the rotation. So they knew it was coming, right? Like, like the Zhang Queen knew you were going only to that fight. There was nothing else for you to do. Your pathing was around the side. It wasn't aggressive. It wasn't like you might be invading instead. So off of that, look to be invading, look to be doing other things on your rotation. Your team backed out there. If you had rotated early and your team had said, hey, we're backing out, you could have been like, all right, I'm just taking back camps. You could have gotten that far we've been talking about that we want you to get. It would have gone a very, very long way. So Ravana is picking up some farm in the solo lane to get him ahead because the Zhang Kui already feels comfortable with the matchup and being ahead. Plus, you're only level 12. He's probably yeah, he's level 14. Has to say he's almost level 14. Uh, the wards right now are kind of irrelevant in my eyes. At least this ward. So this ward, you want to place back here and get mid timer. We're also seeing jungle rotations. This ward's not gonna do shit for you. If the if the fucking you're playing up trying to poke and the Ravana walks over this, he's gonna blink on you and you're dead. Or blink on you and you're gonna ult. And they're gonna wait and they're gonna kill you again the next time. So these two wards in my eyes are kind of irrelevant. You want to fill the blank space. You want to fill here, you want to fill here, you want to fill here. Like, if you have this covered, this covered, and this covered, they can't get over here. They have to walk over the wards to get into kill position. So remember that when you're warding. And nobody's going to be counter warding their back harpies that early. Unless, like, their whole play is to kill you. And then if they're counter warding that shit, don't ever play aggressive because you know their whole fucking plan is to kill your ass. Alright, so... Simple decision-making mechanic type thing here. Uh, you miss your scythe. Sucks. Shit happens. You saw your nemesis coming. You know the nemesis is about to land a fucking alt. The nemesis is about to engage and slow, double slow. Why would you silence or scythe before the fucking nemesis does anything? Why on earth would you ever use a single ability before then? You hit your side there and you would have executed him and you would have gotten the kill. He would have died. That's just simple engagement. Know what gods you're fighting with. Know what gods you're fighting against. If something can be easier for you, let it be easier for you. If a slow on a Jean-Cui is going to make you land your scythe, which it motherfucking better damn well do, let it happen. Relax. So it's okay. You don't have to get them low for the nemesis to come in and get a kill. It's a fucking nemesis. You want that nem to ult, and then you want to fucking blow the bitch up. That's what's going to happen in team fights. So why not let it happen in a two v two engagement? Things like that can be communicated too. He say, hey, oh, you're gonna gank. Okay, I'm gonna wait for you to do this, and then I'm gonna do this. And if you guys know, if you communicate what the fuck is going on, it makes you look like a better player because there's no assuming. There's no. There's no disconnect in information. There's no disconnect in what is happening. It's directly known. If you say X is happening, X is happening, and when Y happens, let's do this, it's so much better. That was a horrible ult. You already know Nem's dead. You can see the two full health targets. You can see the one person executable. At best, you execute the support again, and you die. Recognize that before you wish your ult. Have to recognize that. Rotations need to be quicker. Decision making needs to be a little bit, I don't want to say safer, just smarter. Like, take your time and think about these things. Digest the information. Digest the fact that Nemesis is dead. If your teammate's dead, you're probably not re engaging unless you just have some massive advantage. And you need to understand when you have an advantage. You're never going to advantage 1v3 when they're full health. It's not going to happen. A scythe is a, kind of a waste of a scythe. You put yourself in a really weird situation here, yeah. Hopefully you live. Nice heal. I think you're gonna live, good. Right there, just disengage, dude. You saw the Ravana rotating. There's no gain. The Ravana's higher level than you as a jungler. He could immune your scythe if he wasn't a bad player. There's no fuck, all right, so hold on. We gotta go back. We gotta get talk about this. So, you saw him running at you, disengage. Don't turn around and scythe. Don't waste your abilities. Just fucking run away. Save your abilities for if an engagement happens. Second, if you're lucky enough to fucking live, especially with that low health, just back right away. Get back into the fight. Back. Fucking TP in. You had a teleport. You could have backed and been into that fight right about now rather than wasting all that time. You actually would have been a little bit earlier. And you could have been with your team in case there was a re-engage. 
way smarter, way safer of a play. Also, why the fuck is there a recall teleport fucking song? Yo, the call's on gold. I'm disgusted. It's nasty. So you're down 7k now. You're a Thanatos. The whole game is not going to be played through you now. Nothing in this game is going to be played through you. Your whole mentality has to change. And you basically have to tell yourself and your team, I'm an execute bot. And after we get somebody low into execute range, like the start of a fight, you get somebody, you execute them, then you become a team fight god. You become part of the team fight. At most, you can throw out some scythes that are going to hit for like 300 right now because you're so far behind. So you are 100% just looking for executes. Also, in the long run, you have missed more scythes than you've hit this game. Practice scything. <laughs> Feel, get comfortable with it. That was a good re-engage. That was a good quick pick. You saw the team backing off. That was good. Go into fucking some games and just spam Thanatos and just fucking throw the fuck out of these sites and get comfortable with them because way too many of them are being missed. I do recommend trying Instacast. I think you're at a place where Instacast would help you a lot because I feel like you need to work on your mechanics anyway. So making that change now while also working on something is going to allow you to learn it not be as frustrating and, and you'll be in a better place at the end of it other team has a 9k gold lead we're just gonna skip a little bit because i don't think much is gonna be happening you guys can't force any more fights unless they're super out of position maybe you get a pick overall you either have a crazy team fight over fire giant they pull it you engage you're able to steal it and kill them because they fuck up and take too much damage or you're gonna go into split push mode you don't have the wards right now for you to be playing up or to be going into split push mode. So I would literally just sit under my tower until uh, you grouped up and put some wards down. Jump back. Just a simple rotation. Their team engaged. You got there when the fight was already over. That was a good double side. That was a huge double fucking... That was, that was sick. That was beautiful. Disengage on Zhang Kui to smart. Very smart. Needed to be a little bit earlier. You would have gotten a little bit less poked or a team, but overall, that was really good. That Thanatos all 100% turned the fucking fight. Nice job. Late rotation worked. Now, imagine you're there before they insta-kill your teammate. <laughs> nice try. That was a really good attempt. Overall, by the way, when you're behind, when you guys are, are behind, your active choices will probably change. Uh, I know the blink is there because you want to be able to get into the back line, want to get in the team fight. But as I stated, at this point in the game, you are an alt fucking potato. You're an alt bot, right? Like the one fight that something has happened in this game, you got an alt on two people. That was how the fight engaged. The blink is kind of irrelevant. I would have much rather seen... An Aegis or a Beads, honestly. I think the Aegis being a tanky solo laner could have been very annoying for the other team, especially if they're ever focusing you. Uh, the Beads would just get you out of Ares ult. I'd probably gone for an Aegis and just helped it to avoid big burst damage when they're trying to focus you. Honestly, I think that would have gone a lot farther. I think that would turn fights way quicker than a, than a good boink. You know what I mean? So your team is getting the picks that we talked about. Other team is just fucking up. They're not going for any objectives. They're not pushing towers down. They're not grouped up. They're just diving into weird fights. And you exposing that is your 100% your goal. You're doing a really good job getting some magis, but throwing your scythe into a target that can go immune is really, really bad. Considering you aren't sitting on too much CDR. Get a little bit. You see them all respawning. Scythe are going out. Stop scything! Your sides are pissing me off. You have an Ardeo who has a stun and a slow. You have a Nemesis who has a slow. You've got a Zeus. Oh, they have a Zeus, sorry. And then you have a, the Haji all which has a slow. You have Opwash, who is just going to be fucking forcing them into different positions. Use those things. Opwash those abilities out, and you know the guy's going to juke right. Throw your scythe at him then. Fucking Nem slows. They're not going anywhere. Hit him. Ardeo stuns. Hit him. Save your fucking sight. Stop throwing them out blindly. It's triggering me at this point. It's not a lot of damage that it'd be doing, but it would be extra poke, and extra poke forces them out into free towers. You have to be smarter with your abilities. Like, if you're a Ra in the mid lane, and your team has some CC, you're not going to just throw your ones out randomly and pray they stand still and it hits. You're going to fucking hold the one, you're going to wait for that slow or something to hit, and you're going to get in range to throw it out, and you're going to hit it then. Harry's back. Harry's back.
right, small please. things like this add up like you guys don't understand the the small things in smite build up into these much bigger things very quickly like that tower is some extra gold cutting away at a lead every little cutaway is a little bit more of an item every fucking item you get turns into a closer end game for you things like that are important you need to communicate, dude. Just fucking communicate. I think because you're the soul laner, you feel like you just got to do your own thing like you would as a warrior or a guardian. But that is not the fucking case, especially if you're playing Thanatos. Way more communication on things needs to be coming out. Be telling your team, like, look, I don't do that much damage, so I'm going to be looking to execute. Or, hey, guys, I can blink in silence and we can engage off of that. Or, hey, Nam, if you ult and fucking Hachi ult, I can ult off of it. So they pretty much destroyed your team fight right there. Uh, you essentially became irrelevant as soon as they were able to do that. So that can never happen. Don't play in a position where they can do that. They know you don't have beads. They know you're going to have to ult. So if they pull fire right here and force a team fight and bait you guys in, you're there essentially playing a 5v4. You're, you're not doing that much. See? They know. It, it was literally a very simple basic play. And then you blink into death. That's the game. As soon as that happens, that should be the game. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and see if it is the game. Uh, but it should be the game. Your Nem split push a little bit. They didn't get Phoenix, which is good. Potentially right here, you guys can look for picks. But overall, you're just playing defense. You have an op wash, so your defense is decent. If they take a lot of tower damage, a lot of poke damage into the fucking Phoenix... You can execute somebody. So with Thanatos, you do have a decent defense as long as you have a mage that has clear potential or poke potential, which you have. But we'll see how this plays out. Never defend the tier two here. No, 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 no. You guys are down 13,000 gold and fire giant. You are essentially down two fucking items minimum right now, as well as just being down already in levels and everything else. Uh, your team's almost all level 20, so it's not the end of the world. Don't defend the tier twos. It's six or thirteen thousand gold. It doesn't matter if they get the fucking tier twos. Your phoenixes are going to be way easier to defend. They're going to be, do way, be doing way more damage. Please recognize that. My kind of thought process is, if it's under ten k gold lead, maybe maybe you can defend. If you have like a really big carry, say your hunter or your jungler, or your mage, or just they've gotten tons of farm the whole game, but the rest of the team got shit on, maybe you can defend a tier two. Maybe. If they have fire, maybe. If they don't have fire, for sure you could probably defend it. Now, if it's above 10k, I'm not defending it at all. If it's above 10k and fire giant, not a fucking chance in hell am I even looking at defending that tier 2. You need to communicate that ahead of time. As soon as the team gets fire, be like, alright, what are we defending? And you're defending phoenixes here. If you somehow defend this, I'm gonna fucking throw up because this other team has to be some kind of potato. Your Nem got a lot of poke off to the side, which is dope. Oh, the execute could be hot. This could be game saving. Oh, you choked. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, maybe you're lagging. Ah, uh, you were lagging. That's super unfortunate. You hit that execute. You could run off and you you delay the push. But I think the game's over now. Their team somewhat through by horrible positioning. All right. End points of this coaching video. Your laning phase. Stop looking to fucking. Don't be a kill bot. You weren't in the early game. You weren't like, I got to kill, I got to kill. You were throwing a lot of abilities. Overall, Thanatos wants to do that. As soon as you fell behind, you need to be smarter with how you threw abilities. Blue buff invades need to involve your jungler unless you are bullying, meaning the fucking other solo laner has got no mana and is a little poked out or they're super poked out so they can't really come into the fight because it's usually early game. Most junglers, you can take that one-on-one. -on -one. If you're a warrior, certain guardians, Thanatos, you can take that jungler 1v1 and you'll want to push him out first. You won't want to pull the blue unless you know he's not there, which is very rare. You're going to want to run at him, poke at him, push him out, bully him. Because you're going to sustain. You're a fucking soul laner who's... You got boots already. You're going to be able to outpoke and sustain. You have your scythe for heal. Push him out first, then do the blue. Or have your jungler come over. Don't ever just pull the blue with everyone coming at you. It's not worth it. Even if you got that there, you were dead. It was never going to be worth it. So I say that needs to up that needs to change. You didn't look for any back harpy invades. You gotta start doing that. You see their jungler in the mid lane, you see their jungler in the solo or duo lane. Go get the timer. Clear those. That will help you build back into the game. It will catch you up drastically. The other Jean Kui didn't invade at all. 
You didn't see him take your back camps at all. I don't even think the Ravana was taking back camps. So you guys were good. If you could have pushed that fucking little bit and gotten some farm off of it, you would have been back into the game, 100%. Um, communicate your rotations. Solo lane rotations are game-breaking right now. They are, that is, it is so big. Unless you are bullying and taking all their camps, the only other way you're part of the game in the early is in these mid-rotations. Uh, you had one rotation. It was late. It was called late. And you killed yourself for it. So that can't happen. Need to avoid that shit. Um, on top of that, just be smarter about how you use your abilities. This is going to apply to everything because you weren't calling anything saying, Hey, who, like them go on this person. I can cite them. We can engage or we're just waiting. Just overall seeing RDO said he was going in or engage. You watched it. Let him fucking use his shit and throw stuff off of it. I say that because when you're playing those gods, when you're the RDO solo, you need to say that shit. You need to say, Hey, I can go on this guy and slow him and stun him. And your team will think, okay, I can use this ability when that happens. I can use this ability when that happens. That communication at a high level seems so minimal, but it literally will win you games. 100%. Aside from that, the gameplay was pretty rough. Work on your mechanics. Obviously, I think you know that. Um, your team fight decision making, it was kind of hard to really tell a lot of it because I think you were in like two or three fights. The one fight you had a really good double ult. You got a kill out of it. I think you saw somebody else and you disengaged, which was smart. So that was awesome. You can see there's like the understanding of how it should be played, but just up those smaller things to be able to build into an actual team fight. Uh, I would actually like to see another gameplay where the game's a little bit more even to see how your team fight is because that's the only other place with this gameplay I could really like something I can't notice, something I can't really see or affect. Uh, I would also like to see you not playing Thanatos, playing some either tanky mages, guardians, maybe some warriors, and see what you can do with that. So, otherwise, YouTube, thank you for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe button. Remember to check out the new supporter Patreon thingy. Get your name at the end of the videos. Uh, get a shout-out at the end of the videos. And I will see you all in the YouTube video later tonight.